How's it going everybody? We're back at it again. Today we are going to look at ADAS 1100. I'm going to show you the kit, what you need, and I'm going to just run you through a quick uh, install. Um, this is a universal system that we have, uh, advanced driver assisted system. Some of you may be familiar with the ADAS 1000. This is the new version. Um, so here is the unit itself. Um, this is going to do all the calculations, give you the, the, the footage, do all the recording. So all the features are going to be contained in that one unit. Um, that unit's going to come with uh, two options for powering up, either one uh, like ignition and uh, battery, I'll talk to you more about that during the installation, and then one um, right into a cigarette lighter, so there's pros and cons to both, I'll give you a quick rundown of that, but um, there's your harnessing there for uh, both of those options, it's also going to come with a secondary camera, um, that's going to be usually driver facing, but um, that's there for uh, included in the kit if you so choose to use it. It's going to come with a hub, that's for one of the options of powering it up. It's also going to come with a GPS antenna that's going to give you your speed data and also your location data. Um, it's also going to come with this little USB dongle. Um, we're not actually using this yet. They are including it. We are including it in the kit. Um, you won't need it, but do keep it handy in case we, uh, we roll out some new functionality uh, utilizing that. Um, so that's your basic kit contents. It'll also come with some instructions uh, that are super helpful, very uh, comprehensive instructions. So, um, what you're going to need for the install is basically just a BCM safe test light, um, some wire cutters, strippers, um, just a panel popper, and then some electrical tape to clean up your connection. So, um, pretty straightforward, and uh, I think we're ready to get into it. So, I'll take you over to the truck and get started. Okay, so like I said over at the table, there are two ways you can install this system. Um, I'm going to show you guys the little more intricate way. Uh, this requires uh, more vehicle connections instead of just plugging into the cigarette lighter. So what I have in front of me is uh, all the wiring connection harness. Um, this block connector is going to go into a hub. Uh, so you're going to have to do it this way if you want to use things like the secondary display, the seatbelt vibrator, um, and any other uh, of the um, you know extra features that these are capable of utilizing. So. This is the hub. This is what this harness is going to plug into. I'll just set that aside. So what we're going to have to do with this is um, I'm actually going to run it through my driver's side of the dash. I got to get left and right turn signal, ignition power source, uh, constant power source, and a ground. So um, I'm not going to go into that on this specific vehicle. It's different with every one. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and kind of show you how I'm going to have it set up uh, so that we can plug in the hub and then move on to getting the power connection to the ADAS itself. So I'm going to run and do that and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we're on the side of the dash on the F-150. So as you can see, I got my hub in place. I've also got all my vehicle, conne vehicle connection harness uh, running uh, into the dash uh, for all my turn signal and connections like I just mentioned uh, a moment ago. I've also went ahead and connected my power harness. It's gonna look something like this for the ADAS. Um, so what's gonna happen here is it's gonna plug in um, at the hub and then you're gonna use all this extra harness, um, actually go up the A-pillar across the um, top of the windshield uh, where your ADAS is uh, going to be mounted uh, later on in the install. So uh, I already got it open. I figure I'd just run it now, um, just make it a little bit easier. So that's what we got going on there. So now I think we're ready to go get the ADAS mounted on the windshield and uh, we'll move on from there. All right, so I went ahead and uh, as you can see, I ran my power harness for the ADAS uh, coming from up in the headliner there. So I just got it waiting for me there. Um, so here's where you have some flexibility as far as mounting it. Uh, I, pref I prefer to mount it dead center, right below the mirror, and almost hide it behind the mirror. I'm not much interested in seeing the actual screen of the ADAS, but this is where you have some flexibility. So if you really do want to see that screen of that ADAS, you can mount left or right. There is protocol in the calibration for the, for the system that will call out left or right, and you'll see that in a little bit. Um, but I went ahead and mounted mine uh, dead center just below the, the mirror mount. Um, just really easy to get it nice and centered and right where I want it. So. Um, it's just some double-sided tape. I made sure I cleaned my windshield with a little bit of alcohol um, and let it dry up and then uh, went ahead and mounted it. So now that that's mounted and my power is here, I can actually put the ADAS up there and we could start going through the calibration instructions. Okay, so the ADAS is powered up. Um, so we went through the boot screen. It can take a little bit of time on the, on the first go. So we just skipped ahead to when it was all powered up. So um, we're just gonna go ahead and get through it. I'm just gonna walk you through it real quick. We'll go ahead and hit okay. Um, so press yes at the vehicle wire connection, press no for the cigar jack. Um, we use the vehicle connection, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes. Um, so here it's going to ask me to, to oscillate power, it's checking for ignition. So I'm going to turn my ignition off, is that okay? I'm going to go ahead and turn ACC back on, turn that off, hit okay. 
All right, have I connected my indicator wires? I have, so it's gonna do a check. So it tells me to turn them off. All right, so now we're gonna see that the indicators work. I turn on my left blinker, left arrow turns on, right blinker does the same. So we know we're all good there, recognizes my blinker signals. So we'll go ahead and hit yes. All right, it's gonna ask me to check it again, but you can just go ahead and hit yes through there. Connection is okay. So now it's gonna ask for the input of uh, height and width. You don't have to do this. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay through it. Um, all right, so now it's gonna ask, like I said earlier, you have options left or right, depending just on your preferences. So I went ahead and hit center. So it's already cho uh, choosing center. So uh, I'm just gonna hit okay. All right, and that's just giving me a warning, making, making sure to be careful. Uh, the more accurate you are with your inputs here, the more accurate uh, the ADAS will be. So. We're all good. All right, so now here's here's where it gets a little a uh, little more tedious. Uh, very important to be on flat ground here. It's gonna make things a lot easier. So uh, we're in the garage. It's nice and flat in here. So I know I'm gonna be okay. So I'll just hit okay. So now what this screen is is this. Uh, it's got a gravity sensor. So instead of setting a line to horizon, now you hear it. I'm still okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tip that up just so it doesn't bother me. Um, so it's asking for um, being perpendicular to the ground. That's why it's so important to be on the flat surface. Um, so in the previous versions, you uh, had to align like a green line across the horizon. This one's going to make it a little bit easier, but this can be a little tedious if you've never done it before. So I'll just give you a quick tip. Um, so right now I have this, there's a, a thumb nut uh, connecting the actual ADAS to the bracket. I have that pretty snugged up so I can only move it in small increments with, uh, with a little bit of force. So I'm just going to tilt this back a couple of tilts. All right, so now I'm getting kind of close. So now here's where I wanna make very slight movements and I'm looking for the little okay button to come up down there. So I need to get it a little bit farther back. Okay, so I'm getting close. So I'm just gonna tilt it a little bit. And when you hear that ding dong, it means you're close. So I'm just gonna snug this up a little bit more so I can get a little more precise. Okay came up, you're good. So um, notice I hit okay pretty quickly there. Um, as long as you're close enough for that OK button to stay up for a moment, you'll be OK. So I just went ahead, went ahead and hit OK. So now I'm done. That's it. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up all the way. Make sure it doesn't move. And then now we can go back to the home screen. And as you'll see, that green line's there with no cross in the middle. So now what we're going to go do, and we'll, you'll see that in the next clip, is we're actually going to go drive it around and it's going to automatically calibrate. So we're looking for straight roads with uh, good lane lines. And what's gonna happen is when it starts the calibration process, you're gonna see a red cross in the middle of that screen. And it's gonna stay there until the calibration process is over. Then that, uh, that arrow is actually gonna turn blue and it's gonna give you a little audible tone and then um, that's it. So um, last little bit before we go out for a drive, I'm actually going to connect uh, my GPS antenna. So as you can see here, we have a little zero telling me I'm not moving anywhere. Um, so we wanna make sure that is white. Um, the only reason I didn't do it sooner is I want to make sure that where I place it is going to have enough room. The harness is kind of small. So that's actually where you're going to get your speed um, data. So if you go start driving this around and that's not white and it's not giving you a uh, correct readout, um, something wonky is going on, just give us a call. We'll help you figure it out. No big deal at all. But that is what we're looking for. So um, I'm going to go ahead and mount my GPS sensor and then we can go out for a ride. All right, so I got the blue cross on my screen now. Um, did a little bit of driving around. Like I said, I went like two miles one direction and I'm just headed back to the, to the, uh, to the office now. Um, so it's really quick, it's really easy. Uh, the, you know, the nicer the lane lines, the better. Um, some things to note while you're doing this is uh, it's gonna give you, it's gonna start giving you lane departure warnings, forward collision warnings. So they're gonna be a little bit wonky at first because um, it's still learning. So as soon as that red cross shows up, you'll start to get those alerts and you'll see uh, that it's trying to place little rectangles over the lines and things like that. So just bear with it while it's doing that. Um, it, it's gonna annoy you a little bit, but after it's all said and done, it should get a lot more accurate. Um, if you're running into issues with accuracy after the calibration, we can always go in and adjust sensitivity or just redo the calibration, maybe reset the camera. Um, so the, the accuracy is totally based on, on, on your setup. So if you feel like you're getting inaccurate readings, you can always give us a call or you can always just recalibrate. It's super simple, super easy. It's in your instructions. So um, that's pretty much it. I think we're ready to wrap it up. Um, if you have any questions, you can always uh, give us a call or you can find the instructions at brandmotion.com. So thanks for tuning in.